President Trump takes part in the time-honored tradition tonight of delivering his State of the Union address to a joint session of Congress and the nation. The White House insists the speech will stress bipartisanship and have a positive tone. It comes, though, amid growing drama surrounding the investigation into Russian meddling in the 2016 election. CBS's Hinadoba is on Capitol Hill with a preview of tonight's address. President Trump, when asked yesterday about his first State of the Union address, said to reporters and cameras, quote, I hope you like it. We worked on it hard, cover a lot of territory, including our great success with the markets and with the tax cut. The Russia investigation, though, threatens to overshadow the speech, with news Republicans in the House Intelligence Committee voted along party lines to release a memo critical of the FBI. The White House insists this is not a topic the president needs to touch on tonight. I think we've addressed it every single day that we've been here. Among the talking points we are expecting, a promise of improved trade deals, a $1.7 trillion plan to revitalize infrastructure, and a request to Congress for $25 billion to construct a border wall with Mexico. In exchange, he'll offer a deal on DACA by paving the way towards citizenship for 1.8 million young undocumented immigrants. Though that's something even the president admits will be a challenge politically. It's got to be bipartisan because the Republicans really don't have the votes. While most Democrats in Congress are expected to attend the speech tonight, there is a growing list of those who say instead they are going to boycott. I cannot normalize uh, and act as if this is the, the new normal of today with this president. Mr. Trump is using the address to help raise funds for his re-election campaign. Yesterday, he promised supporters who donate that their name will be flashed up on the screen during a live stream of the event on the official Trump campaign website. And Adoba, CBS News, Washington. And the Democratic response to the president's address will be delivered by Massachusetts Representative Joe Kennedy III. He's the grandson of the late Robert Kennedy, the former U.S. Attorney General and New York Senator. He's also the great nephew of the late President John F. Kennedy. Closer to home now, the Montana Highway Patrol is investigating a fatal crash that happened late last night in Rosebud County, south of Coal Strip. The patrol plans to release more details later this morning, but we can tell you that at least one person has died in the crash. It was reported just before 11 o'clock last night on State Highway 39 near mile marker 21. Troopers arrived on scene minutes later. Information on how the crash happened and who was involved have not been released. Another fatal crash on South Frontage Road in Billings is under investigation as well. Montana Highway Patrol says a semi was heading west when it struck an oncoming black sedan head on. The semi then crossed the ditch and eventually came to a stop on eastbound Interstate 90. The driver of the sedan died at the scene and their identity has not been released. Frontage Road was closed for several hours between the Harley Davidson store and Slumberland while authorities investigated and cleared the crash. The woman shot and killed in Custer County last week has been identified. The sheriff said 21-year-old Shania Raymond died from multiple gunshot wounds. 21-year-old Travis Doss is in custody and facing a charge of deliberate homicide. Authorities believe Doss shot Raymond early Thursday at a home on Moon Creek Road southwest of Miles City. He was treated at the hospital for a gunshot wound to the head and then placed into the sheriff's custody. Doss has yet to make his initial court appearance. In Kalispell, a man is in custody after deputies say he was cooking meth inside his vehicle while parked in front of a Kmart. The business was closed when a Flathead County Sheriff's deputy spotted someone sleeping inside the vehicle running the running vehicle around 1:30 a.m. Monday. That's when the deputy observed the makings of a meth lab. A DEA cleanup crew from out of state was called in to process the scene, pick up and dispose of the chemicals. Sheriff Chuck Curry says while the drug can be manufactured several ways, this is one of the more dangerous methods. This is probably the um, kind of bottom of the barrel, if you will, method. Uh, it's done in usually uh, the large soda bottles, plastic soda bottles. The suspect could face a felony charge of criminal manufacturing of unsafe drugs. Kmart was open for business yesterday, but customers were directed to a different entrance. A trial is underway this week for the man accused of trafficking six victims, including three children, for sex in Montana. Terrence Edwards faces 10 charges related to prostitution, but claims his business was perfectly legal. 
Edwards was arrested in 2016 after a woman reported she was forced into prostitution after going on a date with Edwards. Federal investigators later learned Edwards was trafficking at least three women, threatening them and taking all the money they made from commercial sex. Edwards later met a 15-year-old North Dakota girl online and drove hundreds of miles to pick up the girl and her two teenage friends. Prosecutors say Edwards brought the girls back to Billings to work as prostitutes. But defense attorneys told jurors Edwards wanted the girls to model purses he made in prison the last time he was incarcerated on prostitution charges. The trial is expected to last eight days. In other state news, a new report shows the number of infants exposed to drugs before and after birth more than doubled in Montana from 2010 to 2016. Local leaders gathered in Billings Monday night and listened to findings of the report compiled by the Community Development Department of the Federal Reserve. It provides information about the health and development for Montana's youngest residents, finding opportunities for low-income children to attend high-quality early learning programs still lags in some age groups, and and with more than 60% of parents with children under six in the workforce, finding high quality childcare is also a financial challenge. To provide high qual quality daycare for a four year old would cost more than sending a child to college. Um, and so a lot of low income families, the, percent, the high percent that we have in Montana that are living in low and even in, at poverty rates in Montana makes it almost impossible for them to be able to afford the cost of high quality daycare for their children, which is so life impactful. And you can read the full report on KTVQ.com right now. Meanwhile, officials in Lockwood are narrowing down cost and location options after voters said they're open to having a new high school in their community. One option cost $433,000 and the other would total $2 million. Both of those plans will rack up nearly $2.6 million in development costs. That's about $1 million more than an on-campus expansion plan. A campus expansion would cost about $1.4 million with 26 acres already available to build out. District Superintendent Tobin Navazio says an on-campus option would mean easier access to the high school facilities, but concerns do exist, including safety. If we build it on campus, those facilities will be able to be used by all students, K-8, uh, K-12, excuse me, without, i got to get used to that, um, without, uh, you know, having to worry about busing kids over and those type of things. Um, as far as the cons for on-site, you know, the biggest concern that we've heard is the, you know, pedestrian traffic versus uh, uh, vehicular traffic, and, and that's something we deal with up here in Lockwood quite a bit uh, historically. The new Lockwood High School would start its first year with freshman and sophomore classes totaling about 500 students. Junior and senior classes would be added the following two years. Now to the west of us, Glacier National Park administrators are bracing for another year of record visits, so they're warning those visitors to have a plan B if they hope to visit the park this summer. 2018 was the busiest season on record at Glacier National Park with 3.3 million people entering the gates. The high point came in July with more than 1 million tourists visiting the park in a single month, driven primarily by the increasing popularity of the Going to the Sun Road. Park managers say they expect similar crowds this summer and suggest it would be a good idea if people visiting the park in June, July or August have an alternate day trip plan just in case their original destination is beyond capacity. They say that's especially true if you plan on visiting North Fork, Mini Glacier, Two Medicine, Avalanche and Logan Pass. Well, it will be a good summer for country music in Montana. Grammy Award winner Chris Stapleton is adding Billings and Missoula to his list of stops. Stapleton will take the stage at the Rimrock Auto Arena in Billings on August 2nd. The Kentucky-born country star will also perform at the University of Montana in Missoula on August 3rd. The Missoula leg of the All-American Roadshow Tour will take place at the Adams Center. Tickets for both Montana shows go on sale February 9th. On Monday night, Stapleton won Grammys for Best Country Album, Best Country Song, and Best Country Solo Performance. Well, thank you so much for starting your day with us here on Montana.